You probably already know who Shroud is. He's an ex Counter Strike pro and the guy that generally dominates most FPS games that he touches, including, of course, Valorant. And that's what we're taking a look at today. Today, we're breaking down Shroud and we take a look at how you guys can improve and learn from some of the best players in the game right now, how he wins firefights, how he gains map control, and also how he does utility usage, including some tips and tricks along the way. Now, of course, my beautiful and lovely gamers, my name is Jordan. If you like this video, if you want to help the channel grow and help spread this out so we as a Valorant community can help other people improve, sharing the video around, of course, always helps, but liking it even more so helps against YouTube's algorithm and helps me put the channel, which is much smaller than a lot of other content creators, in a more positive light. If you want to see more stuff like this, well, Comment down below which pro player, stream, or consecrate you want me to take a look at, and I might make a video on him breaking down his playstyle and how he plays Valorant. And if you want yourself to get coached on the channel, well, on our Discord server, there's a help channel there you can drop Valorant VODs, and I might pick it for a future episode. Of course, if you want to rank up and improve and get better at Valorant right now, you can hire me as a private coach. It's 50 euros for a two hour session. I do this, and of course, also Overwatch as a tier 2 coach in Overwatch. Now, with no further ado, let's really just begin. So, I think the easiest way is really just to start this bot. Now, he's going to buy full utility plus armor. And the reason that he does this is quite simple. If you buy a ghost, yes, you do get that one shot to an armor target. But if you buy a ghost and compare it to buying armor, you don't really gain or lose a lot. If you face, if you have armor and you face a player that has a ghost, it both of you guys need to still land two headshots on each other to tap each other out. So you don't really lose damage output in trades. You do lose some precision because the ghosts have a little bit higher precision than this standard classic pistol that you're gaining. But outside that, you don't really lose that much. And I think for Shroud, which has a far more consistent aim than a lot of other people in this game, actually benefits from the fact that he can't just quickly get swinged upon. He can't just really quickly get peeked and get hit by either a Lucky or a skilled headshot and get taken out. They need to take this fight with him, which I think that he would find himself far more um, inclined and effective in winning these con con more consistently. The people that has worse mechanical skill than has. And of course... A bunch of good utility usage because he passes for utility and of course you save this throughout the rounds. Now he's going to start here by smoking for his team as he peeks bathroom. Uh, one, number one, keeping a little bit of pressure on bathroom with his buddy. Notice that he is backing this guy up by playing close to him. So if somebody takes a fight against his buddy, Shark can swing in and take the fight if he loses. Therefore he's trading. This is why you normally would like to push in pairs of at least two. That way you can always get something out if your buddy loses the team fight or the, the firefight or whatever a lot of times then you can actually back him up and potentially take it on top of that if you notice the way that he utilizes utility right here it's actually really nice what he essentially ends up doing is if you notice how a is normally hold um there are numerous angles which makes it a little bit difficult to prove to kind of push through a cubby here so, the, normally somebody likes to play lamps. There's also normally somebody that likes to hold a, a, st a steeper angle um, into corner here. So, normally there might be somebody here, there might be something A. Wind pistol rounds, you rarely see anybody playing window, but there are times where this would be an angle. What Shra does by dropping a general utility to try to block off this area right here, so that it forces that the player that plays close would be forced to disengage or there's a high chance that he will lose this because it will kind of separate whatever defense is made deeper inside the site uh, of course also because again if there's smoke here and utility the guy on site will have difficulty shooting right so by this player will now be isolated and normally be forced to fall back which again will weaken the position of lamp doing that you can take control over that and not get shot from multiple angles so it's actually just a general a really nice way of dropping it but please and i see this too much already a lot of people from their own team would smoke off the choke point here with their own utility for some reason and remember when you do this you're giving the defenders an advantage if you are the one that's playing offensive here as now you have to push through this smoke you will be split off from your team and you will peek into here and you can get shot from 
three, four if you count window, different angles immediately. And you won't know where to check. Even if there's only one or two defenders, you still won't know what angles to cover. And you will not be able to get backed off, backed up by your teammates. So remember to try not to do that as it's a pretty big mistake. Now he's just going to take this, uh, this ult point, which is always nice. Um, something that most people would like to do. Notice as well that as soon as utility is being popped and, and he gets the ult point and utility being topped, he's going to actually rotate with his team instead of trying to, to stall out on bathrooms. Um, he's going to go here and kind of wait, peek this angle. Of course, again, pre-aiming very nicely. His team advances. Again, he will once more smoke this time because his team has started, as you can see, establishing a big presence onto the map. He doesn't want to smoke close now, logically, because then you're splitting off the offense of your own team. So he's going to smoke a little bit deeper into sight, try to stop them from peeking. Let me see if I can bring up the full map here. He smokes deeper into sight, denying this angle, which essentially forces the enemy team that they can't peek out here. And meaning this is the only real angle that is scary. So the guy that pushed out from bathroom only needs to care about fighting anybody in front of him as there's no way they want to push through that smoke when four people from the offensive side is, is pushing through this angle here, right? Just, if they push for smoke here, you're essentially taking a 1v4 alone, but able to get backed up by a team and will probably get gunned down very quickly. So he's going to smoke a little bit deeper. And still, even though he's doing this, right, you can see that his team starts rotating. They notice that there's a lot of resistance. And instead of having to take this resistance, right, because there's, L, number one, they are already outnumbered but also two there's they know that there's at least one player lamp there's at least one tower and there's probably one site right three different angles that you need to cover your one of your buddies already died bathrooms and there's this way it's most like lost so instead of brute forcing which a lot of people do in rank they try to not brute force their way through the point and see if it happens they take the path of least resistance they, tele they teleport b and then they rather set up a, a stronger defense on b which, again, does they don't have to push through this insane setup. It, it kind of goes on the same principle that as soon as there was a lot of utility, when as soon as utility started getting spent in bathroom, Shroud didn't feel like pushing through bathroom alone. As there's a high chance of him dying there. He got his point. He got a little bit of an advantage by getting the point. Then he rotated to short to play from there with the rest of his team and left one guy in bathroom. So that at least were some pressure on the map for his team to play with. So he's going to rotate here. He's very, very low. And there's actually going to be a guy here. He's looking for heals. He's going to collapse and lose one of his players. But whatever. You still at least get the plant. So worst case scenario now. You at least get the money from the plant. Which is something, right? It's a 2v3. But again, because they are now defending. There's actually a far stronger chance. You can see that the setup that they are running here. Is pretty fine. Shroud is, is currently forced to play the point. Because there's probably somebody pushing Cubby. But his buddy um, will most likely be playing... In this position and on also right now is trying to just like see if he can get some pressure down through tunnels here so he's gonna smoke long he's justin's gonna win one fight shroud smokes here potentially stopping a push or at least slowing down a push right so if there's another player that's going to push from a different angle it's difficult for whoever is now going to push this window to do anything about it justin's going to rotate and take a really nice angle i'm trying to go here blind side and this is the one like you can call it a mistake but at the same time it feels like Strahd wanted to take this fight early but because of how omen's ability work the phoenix actually sees him right the the omen the omen kind of blindness is a, a smoke around you where if you get too close they will be inside your visible range so him peeking that close to the player he most likely didn't think or know that he was there and lost that fight because of it that happens, and that's how it goes. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Um, they're going to end up by committing here pretty well. You, They won the round, so they want to spend some extra of that cash. He's going to buy a, a heavy shield. And I think he's going to buy a bulldog as well. He is. They're still going to play, or at least start with an A push, and see where they want to go from there. He's going to peek in here, just deny some angle, kind of claim it. Take this early fight here. Which is really nice. Take the second fight. Again, just nice and clean, just denying angles, being very, very conservative in the way that he's shooting, right? He is taking some shots. Also notice, and this is something that's a very tiny thing, but that everybody needs to do. Notice how he is not pushing straight down mid. He's, of course, using crates here to cover, right? So even if somebody would swing from crates, they need to swing 
far and aim a little bit at a steeper angle to even get Shroud here, right? Of course, he's getting back to my team, so swinging on them right now is a really bad idea. So hey, this guy swinging is... I'm not actually sure what he's trying to do, right? Because they're essentially allowing them to take a fight one after one after one. He's gonna drop a a blinding side here and again notice this pre-firing nicely right most of this was done by pre-firing and then tapping not panicking taking their shots pre-aiming corners and headshot heights right they actually didn't pick up their bomb they dropped it the reason that they're dropping their bombs um i actually do believe this one was a bomb carrier potentially dying with the bomb but you will see later on in the video that they will be dropping their bombs at different locations on the map uh, before I continue that tantrum, notice this. Notice that they, they went to kind of receive the bomb with majority of the players, but therefore, Shroud still quickly rotated back. He didn't kind of run up to the bomb and stay around here. And this is because you don't want to let up, even though the, there's only two players left, you don't want to give them control over sight, right? You don't... If you have already cleared the objective, right? So if you already have control over A, right? So Shroud was already in on the side here, kind of, high, kind of playing here on the in, inside of this corner of the L when if you disengage this site now and run all the way around with your entire team stack four players here to get the bomb and then run back they might have set up something here which again does that you again have to brute force your way through a choke which is defended by I think it was a race and a phoenix right so forcing your team to push through a choke where there's a race and a phoenix allows the defenders to at least have some form of advantage but if you have four players on the site against a race in the phoenix you set up some crossfire right or even if you just one guy right you will gain some information on the enemy team so you will know where they are you will hopefully be able to maybe slow them down or burn some of their utility so not giving sight here he kind of rotated to kind of get the bomb a little bit with his team but not kind of leaving the site immediately and giving all of it up just super 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 fast was very important you can now see that the phoenix is kind of far back here so I'll just pre-aiming a little bit, just making sure that the enemy team is essentially not doing anything funny and hopefully pushing into his pre-fire, right? Pre-firing is really, really important just because they already know his position. They already know they're going to swing, right? So he's pre-firing to hopefully make them strafe into his bullets with a little bit of distance in between those shots, right? So shooting a couple of bullets, short break, couple of bullets, short break, couple of bullets. Wins the firefights much easier because it does to a certain extent reduce reaction time as you don't have to as much react as you're kind of timing the shots in between without forcing the recoil pattern to be too severe right so if you're just holding the button one they can just wait until you run out of bullets and then take the fight or two instead they can potentially which is almost even worse they can force you to take the fight as you're in the spray pattern and it's difficult for people to hit right He's going to take here, he's going to peek, take the fight, nice tapping, headshot height, right? Creating a little bit of distance. Here he's going to get flashed, disengaged to the corner. This is also why it's important, right? He didn't immediately push straight in for the choke. This was maybe a bad point to, point to pause the game here, right? He didn't push fully in here. He's kind of like played the corner, played the corner, tried to advance a little bit, then the flash came out, then they could disengage. Instead of just like brute force running through, right? Take your, take your time and clear the corner a little bit slower. Does that he didn't get caught out as he maybe should have. Wins that fight, nice and clean. Right, this is the one like mistake, right? He peeked with his shadow with his, while he was dropping the orb. Right, so there's actually a chance that he, that, you know, somebody could have been in the window and taken him out. Again, I want you to, to note this, how he is again pre-firing pre the shot. I don't. I hope that this looks fine on the uh, on the video, right? Here, here is one pre-aiming, right? So he's shooting, and then he, as even though the guy has disengaged the corner, he's still pre-firing, and the guy strafes back in at into his fire. Then Shroud is straf spraying a little bit through, just trying to get something. He hears one TP. He's gonna smoke that off, just to kind of slow him down, right? Because again, he doesn't. Now that this guy doesn't know, there might be somebody. There, um, he smoked. He smoked here, so there might be somebody holding this angle, so it will potentially slow down the player as. He might not have the balls to run through the smoke and get gunned down from an angle that he wasn't expecting. He is just kind of trying, holding a different angle. Whiffing some shots, but it's fine, right? This is also the, the, the thing. So what you need to remember when it comes to peaking corners in most games, but especially in Valorant, is that... There are two kind of advantages and disadvantages. There's a, there's the peakers advantage and then there is the defender's advantage. The peakers advantage is quite simple. 
Um, and I should probably mention this in the beginning of the video, and I'm gonna make more guides on especially these instances, how to trade more firefights. But a biggest advantage is essentially if you and your opponent has the same amount of information. So, if I know where you are and you know where I am, right? Exactly, you know, okay, let's say that there's a random, you know, I know that, for example, you are holding... Uh, if I know for, for some reason that you're holding here, and you know for some reason that I'm A short, right? And even worse, you know that I am here on A short, right? So I'm kind of pushing up, for example. The peaker's advantage right now, since you know where, I, where you need to pre-aim, and I know where I'm pre-aiming, I'm holding this angle, sure, but you can decide when the fight is. So you can pre-aim, you can pre-fire, and then peak me. Doing that, while I have to kind of see you register and then shoot and react because you already aimed and you already started shooting when you started the peak you don't need any reaction time so the entire reaction time is just cut out from your side so the guy that is at that point is defending it has the corner and therefore can peak that's therefore the peak is advantage will most likely win this straight as long as we're both hitting our shots because he doesn't have to react so he's much faster on the trigger however and this is, the, this is the downside of the Pika's advantage, and you saw that when Shroud was holding over here and there was someone bathroom. Shroud at this point was holding the angle, right? But the guy from bathroom wasn't sure where which angles were safe, right? There might have been a guy, you know, inside sight. And even so, even if he knew there's probably one guy right side, and they're, right, where right side? Is he here? Is he in here? Is he over there? Is he, is he holding this? Right, where on right side, right? So when he's swinging... Right, and at least at least when you know the general area, there's still some reaction time involved. But this guy that was trying to peek here, he he didn't know when he was strafing over here. There might be somebody here. There might be there, 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 there. And therefore, he needs to kind of look and react and kind of check all the corners, which does that the guy holding the angle, who only needs to focus on one thing, and that is I see guy here, I shoot. He doesn't need to clear any corners. He just needs to pay attention to that one thing, and that's the corner, right? So. If you are defending and you therefore have the the enemy doesn't know exactly where you are but you are just holding an angle the defender has the advantage because he he's fully reliant on only one thing and that is reacting to one corner while the guy trying to peek the corner is not sure where he needs to aim or shoot or if there's anybody even there which especially happens when you're trying to push with sites where there's numerous angles, right? So there might be one hiding all the way in here, but there also might be one guy here, and then there might be one guy here. And maybe there's like a guy further back here, right? You don't know which one of these to check. But this guy right here just does this. He just holds that angle. So while you're kind of checking there and then there and then here, by the time you get over here, you're already lost on reaction time, right? And your shots become much more difficult as you need to then kind of flick and adjust to exactly where he is, while he just need to do a very, very tiny wrist adjustment and click the button. Right? So just so you guys notice some of the 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 advantages and disadvantages of a peak, right? Which also one of the great thing with like smoke and stuff like this, right? Because now he forced as this has been smoked off close, the only thing that's really is 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 this one, right? This lamps is the only kind of real opening here. The same goes with here, right? They are trying to CC, and here they are kind of react. Here they are actually not just even trying to CC. They are really hoping that the CC lands, right? Shroud only needs to do one thing, and that is hold this angle, right? Meanwhile, the enemy team is not sure where on this angle the enemy is is, is going to be peeking. They can be all the way from this corner far back to that corner where the raise is, right? Make, making this form easy for Shroud, right, to hold. That's also one of the reasons that, for example, here, when he, after he gets his first kill and the guy escapes to the corner, Shroud would want to reposition a little bit. So that it's not as predictable to take the corner. Of course, this guy dies immediately anyway. And it's also to kind of keep pressure on him, but it's also because now his position is has changed slightly, and it makes a huge difference between changing that position and not changing that position when it comes to getting frags. Right? He is smoking behind him just so he doesn't get flanked because nobody really held that angle, right? This is about understanding map control, right? So now you, for example, saw the one the wires went out, so now you know there's somebody there. But it's about map control, right? If your entire team is committing to one bomb site and there was nobody that was stepping B, right? So nobody pressuring or slowing down a B push, 
there's nothing stopping the enemy team from coming in behind you because you never controlled any part of this map, right? So that part is open for the enemy to play unhinged and unhandicapped, right? That's also one of this, right? Shroud knows where the enemy is, right? He knows that he's coming from this choke point here onto his side. So he's coming from Link or Connector or whatever you want to call it. He's coming here from. Shroud knows this. But the enemy doesn't know. He d there's a giant smoke screen here. For all he knows, there's somebody holding here. There's somebody holding there, right? Most likely, and this is like, you know, while he's slow walking into the smoke, what's the chance of somebody being like here in the middle of the, of the, of the road, right? Probably very low. The guy probably doesn't check that, right? He's probably very busy at, at covering the angle to Cubby and therefore trying to deny it, right? Essentially just giving Shroud a much free, a very free angle, right? This guy didn't even see him because he was so busy trying to cover into Cubby. Or short, I suppose. Doing some time jumps here. Shroud this once more, gonna smoke up very close. And it seems like he's also gonna, yeah, it's gonna smoke up the entire angle. And then it seems like he's kind of rotating. Just a bit. This is where his friends dropped the bomb, right? The reason that you dropped the bomb, which I forgot to get back to, is so that nobody pushes. Right? For example, right now you're right now you're not committing to a side, right? There you have three people kind of feeling out B, you have two people kind of feeling out A, seeing what kind of works, where there's enough people, where we can get a pick, where we can't get a pick, right? Where we can keep pressure, right? So right now this is actually a very good um control over the map right now. But you're trying to kind of control, but you don't want somebody to be pushing, for example, uh, into B, like far into B, and die with the bomb, right? So therefore, it's kind of in the area, they, they keep the bomb in the map, in the part of the map that they have control over, right? Where there's no enemy presence. This in-between here is very much no man's land, and the enemy can very easily defend those areas, as there's close to gone, right? So Zara is kind of just feeling this out, seeing what he want to do, kind of waiting for some information, right? His, uh, his, uh, one of his players is gonna advance. He's gonna once more smoke here, which again just helps people. One, it keeps, it helps keeping pressure, but it also, um, helps the people that want to play that site to play the site, right? Here he's actually gonna do a little bit of a, of a mistake, right? He starts running here. So at first the TP, so they're already preparing for a, they're already preparing for somebody teleporting, and then he makes a lot of noise without any real pressure, right? There's one, there's a cipher here. That's advancing currently into B side, right? And that's most likely the the idea that there's somebody already. One of my teammates is pushing the side, so there's probably some attention giving to him. Maybe not paying too much attention to Shroud and Shroud want to rotate fast enough so that he can back up his buddy. Um, but it doesn't work out that way. And this is where you can see, right, how fast this guy takes him out because this guy knows where Shroud is. He can hear him, but Shroud doesn't know when he's getting peaked. He just he's preem in this corner. And being prepared for to get peaked, because that's, you know, where he's assuming to, to, to be enemies, which is fine. But just notice how fast he dies, because the enemy is assuming where he is, right? And this dies, right? And it doesn't matter. Now, I'm going to jump. I, I would like to know, would you guys like me to play his route's teammates, when, whatever they're doing, and continue, like, talk about what their decision making? Right now, I decided to just kind of jump past every death and every, like, wait time into just Shroud gameplay, because that's the guy that we're kind of looking at, um, instead of looking at all his teammates, even though some of his teammates do some really, really good stuff as well, right? This, again, just a surprise of angles. One, he's pushing with his allies uh, with the boom bot, so he's pushing with an ally gadget, right? So there might be some attention to this boom bot, so again, that's the great thing with the boom bot. This come in, they, sh they aim down to that, and then you swing the corner, and they are not at head height, and there might also be mid spray pattern, right? They already may, may be mid sh shooting, so they're already kind of in a weaker position for that, right? Two, he jumped over the slow field. So there's no really anybody that is assuming that the enemy team is this far in, which is one of the great thing with Omen, right? They, so they're not expecting this, so there's very little chance of them holding this angle that strong. And again, he, this guy was just focusing on one thing, and that was taking out that Boombard, right? The Boombot peeks first, then Shroud peeks after, and immediately Shroud immediately pre-fires this corner. He doesn't get anything, but he still pre-fired the corner, which I actually think is really, really well, right? That way, you don't get surprised from that angle. He's kind of holding right here because he wants pressure onto the map, but he might want to take a different angle. This way, he's just now he's just covering the back of his team. He's once more going to smoke, again, slowing down the enemy offense. 
and now he's gonna play from lamps right he's gonna play lamps he's gonna slowly peek uh, window and make sure there's nobody there Right here, he's kind of just feeling it out again, just waiting for information. He's not just blindly pushing in somewhere. He's he tried to blindside some people. He's just kind of just trying to see where there's enemies. Unfortunately, lose this fight. And that's really it, right? So this is this was actually really really well, except the fact that there should probably have been a much faster push, right? You know that there's one window, but right, it's a very very slow moving push here, which is not very good, right? When there's that, when you have that numbers advantage, but you're not pushing in, you're not spending utility, you're not claiming more space, you still kind of funnel down into these choke points and allowing the enemy team to peek you from a lot of different angles that you can't deny, right? You that point want to push them away so that they have less options on the map to play from. That's kind of one of your easier ways of playing. So here, for example, they're going to play a little bit faster, right? The boombug comes out. Luckily, Shroud again has a teammate to back him up, so even if somebody swung on him there, hopefully the Sage can be able to back him quite easily up. Utility is coming out, trying to slow down their push, right? This also can help the enemy team actually doing something with it. Notice that again, they left the bomb here, which can be good, it can also be bad, right? It's very good if so, so that nobody dies now with it, like, here, right? That would be horrible if somebody died hookah with it. However, it would be really great to have it with them if they don't get, you know, actually control over this, pie, this objective, right? Now, Justin is going to be beast and get a lot of frags here, but notice how Strahd, again, he kind of clears every corner, use, use kind of parts of the wall to make sure that he doesn't get fucked, right? Nice control flex onto different areas. This is why we talk about mouse control being very important, because while it's very easy for players to walk into crosshair and then shoot somebody, right? If they just hold an angle, somebody straight into your corner, anybody can kill you then, because it's just hold down left mouse button and then you get frags. Good mouse controls allow you to do stuff like where you're just clearing corners really fast and have fast um, movement and so on. This is again about getting a surprise angle, right? Slow walking, the race is not expecting this. There's, he even has his knife out, right? Because he's rotating fast. So this is again about that. Uh, now Shrad is just going to be hunting a player. I don't think I need to show him hunting down a player. It's just a waste of time and not very informative. He's essentially just locking angles and he doesn't even find him. He's just slowly but surely holding angles and making sure that Whoever tries to rotate to B can't rotate past Shroud, right? Once more, because they have such a numbers advantage, denying angles from the enemy team, right? Which is very important, right? Denying map control for the enemy team is, is, is really important so they don't get a lot of options in where they are playing without risking, you know, death. And especially as the offenders, when, when you are trying to offense and you have the bomb planted, then, you know, the enemy team is on a very tight uh, time schedule so they can't clear every angle without you winning on just time right it's the same that the defenders would like to use in certain situations here once more he's clearing his angle holding this just in case somebody peeks through the smoke right so it's important to pre aim here in case somebody peeks through the smoke or has already claimed this part of the smoke right as he doesn't know that he's gonna clear all the way left and then clear the rest right so he doesn't walk out of the smoke and get shot from a stupid angle clearing this angle on the on the right side clearing the one far left gonna Drop utility here and do one gray mistakes because he saw the phoenix on his right side and you want to peek him and that is not covering his entire left side, which is kind of bad, right? Also, he, he tried to establish very, very fast point control here, right? And there was nobody to follow up on that point control, unfortunately, and for some reason they still have a player that's ulting through A instead of ulting them in here. That's unfortunate. That's what happens when you queue with people, right? But... Unfortunate, right? There wasn't anyone committing in with that push. So, you know, again, if you're pushing with a buddy, or if at least if you're pushing while there's a push on another part of the map, you're, there's a high, lower chance that there will be somebody locking your angle because they're busy shooting or, you know, pre preparing to shoot down your teammates. And two, if you die, there's a higher chance that you, something will actually come out of your death, right? Which will help you far more. So even if you manage to die, hopefully your teammate can do something with it. He's going to smoke lamps here. Uh, so that can get peaked. Then it's going to get stunned for half a second. And now he's going to kind of be uh, a little bit like different. He's going to be a little bit conflicted. Maybe rotate, maybe not. He sees the slow orb and therefore decides, okay, we need to rotate, not stack everybody in the choke. Drop some utility. This one guy portal, so he's kind of just holding this. And as that kind of comes out, he, re he reinstates the push through mid. 
and this is where we talk about peak disadvantage, right? The enemy knows exactly where Shroud is, right? They're well, at least he's preparing to be there, so he's he's peeking and just pray for in this one corner, right? Which gets Shroud that killed, right? Also notice that the enemy here, if you notice how he how he swings, he swings fast, so he strafes out. He doesn't slow walks around the corner. He swings out, doing that. His doing that. He's not just like here where Shroud were pre. I mean, Shroud actually has to move his mouse to try to deal to try to deal with it, right? Which is also slightly important, right? Making yourself movable, right? Because again, the more difficult you are in hitting in your peaks, the higher chance the enemy team won't hit you. Especially if you're playing in lower elos, you know, faster and, you know, effective mobility really helps out a long run because their aim isn't that good. They're just really good at shooting at a corner and you accidentally strafe into it. Shroud now has an op, so he's just gonna hold this angle for a while. And try to deny it. Gaining out some stuff. His team is coming up with a bunch of stuff. Uh, they're gonna actually ult. He's gonna get hit. He's smoked. Which was actually a very nice smoke, right? Because he, he smoked. He smoked here, so they can't peek from lamps. Which is really nice. That way, hopefully the ult gets less value. Because it's only this, like, tiny, kind of tiny area in between that is uh, able to get pressure, right? And of course, Shroud on peaks, so he doesn't get killed. He's gonna peek again with his op in. Just try to get some shots through the smoke. Swing a little bit wider, change angle, see if there's somebody all the way over here. This way he stops him from swinging on his team. He's then gonna slowly clear this area. Just make sure nobody tries to come from uh, B and be cheeky. Reload. Doesn't peek while reloading. Right, guys? Too many times to see that. People dying because while they are reloading. He's gonna peek this angle. This is like where it's very scary, right? Because there's at least two, if not three or four angles here that he needs to cover, right? So he's kind of like slowly strafing out for it, making sure that he first covers this part and then he can peek boxes, right? So he doesn't swing too wide out, peeks the entire window and then also peeks boxes down here and then get just shot down from an angle that he can cover, then clears boxes, then clears the corner, then clears you and then clears that corner, right? Slowly but surely making sure that he doesn't peek too many angles because again, it doesn't matter how good aim you have, if you're peeking like eight angles at a time, you, you can't flick through all of them. And then notice this, right? He knows that there's utility. He knew there was a guy here close. So he's going to peek this corner, right? Where there's no way this dude hopefully is expecting, right? That there's a guy there. No, this dude actually does expect that Shroud is there. Shroud gets him with the op because he's just holding an angle with the op. It's fairly easy to get frags. Two smokes out. This allows him to at least advance with a choke and use the teleport, right? So I was gonna try to be cheeky and see if he can stop somebody to rotate with them. Doesn't seem to happen. Still, still clears his corners, doesn't clear his left, but the chance of somebody being there is very low. Gets off the plant. This plant is really, really nice because it allows you to play, right? If you think about where he's planting, right? When he's planting over here, it allows uh, stopping of, of a diffuse from both this side, if, some, if somehow they have hookah control cell, which they probably lose, but also allow them to play elbow here, and then deny the plant from this area, and also from garden, right? All of these angles here can stop it. If it was inside, it would force Shroud to kind of push in here, in either of these two angles to stop it, which would be horrible for him, right? When he's playing with an op. So again, nice choice of planting area. There's a guy's close already, so Shroud just trying to hold it. Unfortunately, doesn't hold it. And I think I should Justin get some get a pretty nice shot off here, right? Notice that Justin can now hold this angle really, really nicely, right? It's very difficult for anybody to deal with him. As soon as Justin hears the diffuse, he will know where the guy is and he can swing. And again, we already talked about how peak is advantage to work, right? Like that, right? This dude is even spamming through here doing some damage. Doesn't fucking matter, right? Justin swings on him. You have to have really good reaction time to deal with that. Or do what Shroud does, and that's pre-aiming the corner, right? Pre-firing, I mean. Pre-aiming and then pre-firing that corner, where calls also help with somebody swinging on you. But then you need to, like, time it and hope. And it was very clear that the race wasn't sure what Justin was. He was just kind of shooting through the wall to see if something came out of it. Since he naded far in, right? Here he's gonna TP into towers, or so he can play a window. Right, kind of deny, which is really good. There's nobody here. Which is nice, I suppose. Gotta drop some smokes. 
gonna drop so no yeah gonna drop one smoke there so he doesn't have to care about it himself right now that way this way he can easily play towers and he's actually gonna lose this fight but i think it's a really nice fight to notice how he paces against enemies one this time he pushed himself far out one so he can see the enemy a little bit far, uh earlier also because this there's a high chance they will be pre-aiming close to this corner right so not play so kind of placing me in a little bit of a like in betweener of these two corners makes him a little bit unpredictable two notice how he's going to take this fight there's going to be two people there's going to be one guy peeking him from the from this side one peeking him from here notice how he tries to to at least control these guys pre-firing the corners um and get a little bit of a peek advantage here right even though he's unfortunately playing with a phantom player one player two right he, he deals with he should have player one straight away preempts here Right, peeks again, shoots once, shoots twice, and then unfortunately he gets shot through the wall. But notice how he's controlling these players really, really, really nicely. Right, one, there's one there, one, two there, right? This guy rotated far, he tries to challenge that. He misses all the shots, or not all of them, but he doesn't land headshots and they're not one taps. But it's actually a really nice way, unfortunately, this sage gets him through the wall, but it's a really nice way of trying to manage multiple opponents. Right? Which is really nice. Also nice shots from this age, of course. Like, getting him through the walls there, really, really nice. Taking that peak, taking that angle. Good job. Right, this dude trying to push in, right? This is why it's so scary to push that early if you're pushing from a predictable angle. Because what are you going to do when there's two people like this, right? It's crossfire. Can't cover both. Absolute idiot. Gets up some free shots. Gonna reload here. Also, if you guys like this longer format, I would I would like to know. This is a very long video. I think we're up to a, like a half an hour because of my tangents. Do you want me to go slower? Do you want me to go faster? Right? I'm trying to break down stuff and concepts for a lot of people and make sure that I kind of include everybody uh, from like people that is not used to FPS games to hopefully help some of the some people that are also veterans try to get into this game a little bit. Um, yeah, so yeah, here's Shroud is trying his very very best to make him difficult to hit. Um, uh, but am I going too fast? Am I going too slow? I know this video is very, very long already. Um, I don't know if you guys like this. I think that's this way we're gonna stop. We could talk about his defense inside with the pistol round, but we are like at, what, like 37 minutes or bullshit like that. I think this is where we caught it. Uh, if you made it to the video, which I don't think you did, type Shroud down in the comment section. Uh, that way I can kind of get a gauge how many people were entertained and actually want to watch all the way through. Uh, and again, comment if you like this uh, content in this speed, if you didn't, uh, and so what, what you guys would like to see in the future. And of course, like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you like this type of content. Uh, and of course, submit your VODs to our help Discord server. I'm going to probably help and start doing some uh, official coaching on this channel in this game, just because it's very, very fun. And of course, private coaching, always available, 50 years for a two-hour session. Hit me up either for this game or or watch, doesn't matter. As always, guys, peace to the care of the positive. I love you guys very, very much. My name is Majo. As always, keep telling me in your process.